<laughs> Should we do it at the same time? Sure, yeah. Okay. Two, three. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Welcome back to this here corner of the internet. Yes. I'm oh, Shelby. Here. Hi. Shelby's here. She came to Seattle. We saw the science. We did the thing. Very tired. Our feet kind of yeah. hurt. We've been having a, a time for the yeah. last couple days. It's been a lot of fun. I've, I love Seattle. I've fallen in love with the Pacific Northwest. She's coming back. She's Christy coming wants me back. to move here. I, I literally <laughs> am campaigning to get her to move out here. Just think, of, think of all the fun things we could do. I know. We could go hang out in nature. Just bought a just... house in Texas, but... No, it's fine. It's fine. Don't need that. You don't need it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Shelby's here, so that we thought that we would film some vids. Yep. Because this is what we do. That's Why not? That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to talk about... Christy had the idea, actually, to talk about some mistakes we've made. Recently, and also, like, some of them are from a while ago. Yeah. I don't know. How long have you... How long would you say that you've actively been on a zero-waste transition? Or, like, you know. When I started referring to it as such? Yeah. Uh, two years. Okay, same. Yeah, I think I was making, like, sustainability-type stuff. Yeah. And then in July of 2017, I was... I did a zero-waste challenge. Mm. So then from there on... Well, these things we can... I want to talk about your whole zero-waste story on my podcast, which we're also going to do. That's going to be bit. fun. Yeah. So we're going to film a video here, video on her channel, and a podcast. I'm going to have her video linked below. Okay. I guess my podcast is always linked below. Yeah. But, yeah. So... Make sure that you go watch that one. Go check out. We're going to talk about things we wish we knew mm -hmm. before, before we started this. Ways. So kind of an extension on like how we could have avoided all of right. these mistakes, honestly. Yeah. Before we jump into this video, I just want to say that obviously all of these mess ups and reasons why we suck at this zero waste thing, um, they're all really relative to both mine and Shelby's privilege that we have because we do have access to a decent amount of things in a low waste way. And we both have, you know, we don't neither of us are facing medical conditions or any of that stuff where waste would be out of our hands. But the point of this video was just to show that we're normal human beings and we do buy things regularly that still create waste because we're normal human beings. We're not like Instagram cookie cutter, perfect zero wasters. And obviously there's been more mess ups than we mentioned in this video. This is just kind of like a few that came to mind. So I hope that this makes people feel like they're not the worst person in the world for having done one of these things a few times or for maybe not having access to certain things all the time yeah that was kind of the point of the video and I just want to get that out of the way because yeah everything is relative to the privileges that you have and yeah we suck at the zero waste thing too we're all in this together it's better to have a million people making small changes than it is to have one person making every absolute change so that was kind of the point. All right, enjoy the video. First one for me is small Amazon purchases. I will admit, you use Amazon. It's been a thing. Christy, <laughs> okay, what are you well, doing? I, I mean, it's happened a few times. Yeah, like, I mean, me too. Yeah. I'm not even. I I feel like I can't lie about that. Yeah. Like, every once in a while, there's something that I just don't have access to that I've needed. Um, and a good example of this, and we were talking about this in my hair care video a couple weeks ago, the flax gel that I make every week, I just use flax seeds and water that I make my hair gel with. And I have to make it every single week because the flax, it, like, ferments. It goes bad. You know, it yeah. spoils. So I have to make it every week. I always make too much, so I'm wasting too much of it. And... It's kind of just like a pain in the butt to make every single week, but if you put grapeseed extract into it, it'll last three months. So to me, that sounded like something that would help me stay on this lifestyle. I'm not going to be looking to like find any other hair products to right. do this. If you don't have to make it every week, that's Yeah, exactly. A lot. So having grapeseed extract, I couldn't find it anywhere. My mom was doing an Amazon order. I was like, chuck it in. Yeah. So I did. How did you find out that that would help preserve it? Uh, I saw it in a YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. No, I, I think, you know, Amazon is demonized a lot by just, like, for many reasons. Mm -hmm. Aside from the waste issue, like, they have some questionable ethics I keep hearing. But they're also, they've also made, like, everything in the world accessible to almost exactly. everyone. Not everybody has access to fancy stores with fancy, like, vegan products or, like, random ingredients for things. Like, that's just... That's not the world that we live in. Yeah. I wish it was, yeah. but it's just not. 
and so yeah if you if you're looking for an ingredient that specific mm -hmm. and in a city as big as seattle you couldn't find, find it, it imagine living it yeah. even and like yes there are there are things that it's like did i really need it like i could just continue to make it every week like i don't really need it so i think asking yourself if you do really need it that's really important but also there are like you can look for more sustainable online options before you go to amazon for sure like there are so many small zero waste shops that you can support which is an incredible thing in and of itself yeah and they also ship more sustainably they might be more local to you so like the emissions aren't as high yeah. like there's always options but for, i mean for some things there are certain online stores that are just like I even, there's um, Mountain Rose Botanicals makes, or Mountain Rose Herbs or something. They do a lot of, like, herbs and stuff like that, and they're a zero-waste company. The company itself is zero-waste. They're, sometimes their stuff isn't, but, like, even if you check those before you check Amazon, I think is really helpful. Yeah, for sure. There are a lot of resources. It's just, like, the Amazon is, like, the one that everybody knows. And, and it's everyone so has easy. access to. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but, yeah, definitely there are other stores, and I try to highlight that, those more as well so people can know because mm -hmm. how do you know if yeah, no one tells you? Exactly. Right. So mm -hmm. my first one was uh, kind of how I got here on that yeah, thing okay. called an airplane. Maybe you've <laughs> so, heard of it at some point in life. I think that it's a mistake that I made. I don't know. I don't want to say it's a mistake I made. I don't travel very often in general, and mm -hmm. I definitely don't fly very often. Like... The flight I took to get here is the first flight I've taken in over three years. Yeah. So I don't want to say it's a mistake I made because also Christy and I looked up how long it would take oh, yeah. for me to get here if I didn't fly um, or drive because that's, I mean, I feel like driving also emits emissions yeah. itself. So it would take, what did we say, like five buses and three it was trains? Five trains and three buses. Three days and eight hours. Yeah. So what is 36 plus 8? However many hours that is, is how long it would have taken me to get here without a plane. And I just feel like that's very... And that's like non-stop travel too. It's right. like, it's not like you're, you know, you've got a break. It's, it's unrealistic for even me. And on top of that, I mean, it's not a direct route, right? So you're probably taking buses and trains and like Yeah, weird it went places. like up to Oklahoma and then like right. over to... Yeah. So is that adding to your emissions? Like you would have to do a grand total thing. That's one of the weird things I was telling her, too, is, like, if the plane that you would have taken ends up being not completely full, mm -hmm. like, if they still had open spots, yeah. are you emitting more emissions by driving than if you had just gotten on the plane that was going anyway? Right. So, But is that the same thing as saying, like, like, the water bottles are in the store anyways? Yeah. If I don't buy, like, if I buy one, I'm, or if I don't buy one, it's not doing anything? Uh, or is it not? Well, I feel like whenever you don't buy a water bottle, right, you're using a reusable one, so then you don't have to create a demand for that at right, all. Right, right. But whenever you, whenever you don't take a flight, you still are emitting emissions in the car. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, like, a reusable doesn't emit anything, yeah. whereas, I mean, I feel like it's different. I hate that argument. It's a valid question. It's not, it's not yeah. invalid at all, I don't yeah. think. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of interesting things around... Um, travel and like things like that. I wouldn't call it a mistake, but I'm not the perfect zero waster for sure yeah. if I'm flying. That's... The other thing too, oh yeah, well I don't, I mean we still live regular lives. I drive a car. Yeah, me too. Um, and I'm very, I think part of, so I'm actually moving in a week. I still, I'm probably not financially ready to move, but part of why I'm moving is because I just found myself driving downtown all the time. I felt really guilty about it. So that was like kind of a solution for me and having to drive less. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to be driving, but it's something that I was in a privileged position that I could try and make something work. I still am not totally sure how it's going to work. But <laughs> we, um, everybody yeah. positive vibes for Christy. And it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I mean, fine. we're moving at the same time. So yes, pray, yeah. pray for both of us. Positive vibes for Which both of us. Which has been really fun to just like talk about yeah. secondhand furniture and things. Yeah. But I think like the solution too is like, I, maybe I'm not perfect, but it doesn't, like your phrase, like, the world, I can't do all the good the world needs, but... She got it, look at her go! What is it? I can't do all the good, do, can't do all the good the world needs, but the world needs all the good I can do. Yes. Like, just because you can't be perfect in one area doesn't mean that you can't make a difference in it, and so my commitment is that I fly at an absolute minimum. Like, when I moved here, I think it was the first time in three years similar that, like, I had flown, yeah. and I have flown since, but I try to keep it just for, you know, family events, things that I kind of have to have do. To be at, yeah. I don't really fly for work. 
if I don't, I haven't had that opportunity yet, but if it's not like a necessity then I'm not going to do it. Um, and just keep it to an absolute minimum as much as I can because unfortunately we live in North America and things aren't accessible here. Like we don't have the option or the privilege to just take a train to another country, but some people do. And I think that that's incredible and I'm really jealous. Yeah, but, very uh, much. I don't have that luxury. Yeah. They're trying to build a train in Texas mm. from Houston to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And there's this huge uproar about it. People are so angry and like don't want Why? anything to do with it. They just think that like, well, one of the arguments is that poor people will be able to access the city's easier, so like okay. criminals or like lower income people and like, I think there's a lot of fear around it. It seems like a frivolous fear. It like does. A... It seems strange. Yeah. And then the other thing isn't is... It, isn't it not giving them the opportunity to new things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of sad. And then the other thing is like people are worried about having um, like railroad, like a train in their like rural area of their okay. whatever. But yeah. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> How is that been? Oh, we can talk about that in the podcast. Being from Texas, I feel like, is a very... It, I can't imagine zero waste being easy. No. Well, definitely. I mean, I'm lucky that I live in Austin, um, mm. but I can't imagine it. Yeah. Where I grew up. No, definitely yeah. not. Going out to bars. All right. This is something that actually... it. I Okay, maybe it doesn't happen, like, super frequently, because I'm not, like, a huge bar goer, but, like, once a month, I go out with my friends, I do the thing, I... You know, I'm young. I enjoy it. <laughs> this is this we do young. <laughs> Partying it up. Um, I like going out, you know. And every yeah. once in a while, um, I don't know Seattle very well. Like, I just moved here two years ago. And I only really started to have a social life, like, six months ago. <laughs> and, um, yeah, everyone, like, I don't know the bars. And every once in a while, I go out. And I, I try to remember the no straw thing, obviously. But yeah. sometimes there's plastic cups. Like, I don't know why bars are still not, like on the disposable thing I, it's mostly like lower uh you know like divier bars and stuff yeah but every once in a while that happens and it's usually after i've had a couple drinks and i haven't really like looked around the room to see, see what, what they like things are being served in right and like you know i order a drink and it shows up and it's like a plastic thing is in front of me and i'm like damn it sir <laughs> what's going on <laughs> I did not order. Yeah, yeah. This, this is I not think, what I wanted. I think Cath Catherine, I think it was her that came up with that from Going Zero Waste. Mm. She calls it non consensual plastic. Like, oh, I, I, like didn't, that. I didn't order plastic yeah. with my, yeah. With my drink. Yeah. But it happens. It has happened before. And, uh, what's she gonna do? Especially, like, after I've had a couple drinks, I'm like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> panic. Panic. So panic. panic. But it has happened. Another one that I wanted to talk about is uh, using like compostable disposables, mm -hmm. right? So like the plastics that say compostable on them oh, yeah. or like to-go containers that are cardboard and therefore compostable. Like whenever I got to Portland, actually, my partner was at like a business dinner because that's why I came here and, originally. And Long story. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. And I wanted Veggie Grill when I lived in California was like my ish. Like I was, it was one of the things I was most excited about to come back here. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, she's going to eat dinner by herself. I'm going to order me Veggie Grill to my hotel room so that I didn't have to go out and eat by myself. <laughs> and I, I remember I looked it up and saw that all their to-go containers were compostable. They were paper. And like, so I, I like excused it. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that we do that a lot. Like, yeah, oh, just because it's paper, it's okay. Right. Like, the, oh, that comes in paper, that's fine. Oh, that comes in yeah. compostable plastic, that's fine. I'm definitely guilty of that. Yeah. And I think that... I think that was a huge thing for me in the beginning mm -hmm. of going zero waste. Like, I just got it so excited when I found products that were like, or things that were accidentally sustainable that I'd buy yeah. them, even though I didn't need them. But I was like, <laughs> I can have good. this. Like, which oh. I don't think is a good mentality because that is like a... Um, restrictive. A restrictive mentality. Yeah. But in the beginning, I definitely was like, ooh, this is like, I can have this. So like, I'm going to get it. Yeah. Even though I don't need another soap bar. That oh, yeah. Your in, like, obsession with soaps. I love soaps. They're all so pretty. They're so pretty and they smell so good. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think that I don't, but I don't really want to like hardcore like rail against compostable plastics or it, switching to like paper to go containers because mm -hmm. I think it's great for like most businesses to be doing that instead of yeah, the alternative. Oh, for sure. But I think like as people who are trying to move towards more towards zero waste and do more than like what 
is expected kind of, yeah. then we know better. And like, I also don't work. think, you know, like if you are in a situation where you're buying something that's wrapped in paper, obviously like that's not a bad option. Right. But it's just like the excessiveness. Yeah. If it can be avoided. Like for example, instead of having veggie girl be delivered to you, can you walk over there and just I eat in the restaurant? Have, I yeah. could have. I could have. Like that's just an example. But yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah, I think I, it's mistakes I think I've made mm -hmm. or like something that started to be ingrained in my head that like, I think I could move away from. Yeah. Um, okay. My next one, I actually mentioned this recently in my fast fashion video is in the very beginning of me getting into like anti fast fashion stuff. I actually, this is like the very beginning of me getting into zero waste too. I bought new jeans like from a fast fashion company. I had a slip up. <laughs> I bought new jeans. Like it's a thing, and uh, I still wear them to this day. They're, yeah. But yeah, it, it was like a slow transition. You know, I think with any transition, you're gonna have slip ups and mistakes. And I definitely had some with zero waste too. That would be like food, which I kind of do want to dive into. I want to dive into that on your in your video a okay. lot, especially with like my relationship with food. Yeah. Um, but. In any lifestyle transition, like, what you know now is your life. It's your routine. It's your comfort. It's your culture, right? Yeah. Which sounds stupid that buying products is part of your culture, but it, it is. Yeah. Like, buying things, I don't know, just it's like the way you operate and the way you live. So, like, detaching from that, there's going to be things that come up. Unless you're, like, this, you know, really super strict, human. super human. Yeah. Um, like, I was pretty good with veganism. I didn't have a lot. But with zero waste and with fast fashion, like, yeah, I bought some jeans. I had some food slip-ups in the grocery store. Yeah, well, you know, I feel like I have... Time. I feel like I do the food slip-ups quite a bit because yeah. it's something that you have to do, like, multiple times a day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. So. And it is something, yeah, that you're required to do to survive. Right. You know? Sometimes I get really hungry. So, okay, the biggest food one for me was protein bars and granola bars. I don't know why. I've just always loved them so much. Like, they're so fun. You can get different flavors. You can pick and choose. It's great. <laughs> but, like, they all come individually wrapped in plastic. I don't think I've found one. Like, now I'm into making my own, which is, like, a thing. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, my partner got me into that. He's, like, super into it. Um, but, yeah, I every once in a while I'm, like, starving, and that was always my go-to. Yeah, was, it's easy. Yeah, and it took me a long time to kind of find... Also, there was, like, an emotional component with certain foods that took a long time for me to wean off of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was what I have on my list as well. Like, sriracha mm. that comes in plastic. Sriracha's delicious. Never heard of a way to get it without the little the plastic. I can, I can one-up that. Not only is it plastic and you want it, I... Also love sriracha, and I'm also allergic to it, and I have bought it since you told me that. Oh my god! What are you allergic to in it? The peppers? Sulfites. Oh, I have a real. It's weird. It's an actual thing. I was diagnosed. It gives me um, asthma. Wow. So, wine. Literally, there's sulfites in everything. It's a preservative. Yeah. Um, okay. Sriracha has it. It gives me asthma. It's like hard to breathe if I have. But you too eat much it anyway. <laughs> It's like, you know, people who are like lactose, they still are like, yeah. but I love ice cream. Yeah. I'm like that with sulfites. I love wine. I love sriracha. Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that happened to me, and this was, again, it like served a function. It was like circumstantial. So I had a, uh, I just switched my birth control last year at some point to a copper non, non, well, actually I do two different forms of birth control, but, and I do want to talk about this in a different video as well. I do want to say that I want to like kind of, I feel like I've been all over the map, you know, started with the whole hormonal thing, did some other things. Yeah. Figuring it out. Yeah. My birth control is pretty foolproof. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. But um, yeah, I get it. I got a copper IUD, a non-hormonal IUD put in last year. And when that happened, first of all, it was like kind of a bitch of a thing to do. It was a little painful. And when you get one put in for the first couple months, you can risk, if you're using a menstrual cup, you can risk sucking it out. Did not want that to happen. No one wants so that. So I did buy some tampons. I tried my best to do like, you know, I bought the organic applicator free stuff. Um... But, I mean, yeah, I did have to buy tampons, which kind of sucked. Yeah. Uh, not gonna lie, I didn't enjoy using them. I was like, I missed them. The, like, tampons are very convenient. They are so <laughs> convenient, right? Com I, like, I, I, I... Let's be real, they're convenient. Right. I don't use... Well, I don't know, because my, my partner uses the menstrual cup, and she mm. swears it's, like, the easiest, the best, the... 
I've never used one, so I always have to refer to her when it comes to that, but mm -hmm. she says it's great. I do like my menstrual <laughs> cup as well, but I don't know, like, you can just, like, t tampons are, like, a little bit more convenient. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm i sure that they are. In certain cases. I get that. In certain cases. Um, but I did a similar thing where I used pads because I was having... I talked about this, like I told you, I have a secret video email list, um, and I talked about all my I'll health sign issues. Up for your email list. Yeah. Also sign up for mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I was having like all these health issues. It's kind of a long story. That's why I did like a secret thing about it. But anyway, so my period was just going so long and was getting so bad that I didn't, I didn't have like an endless supply of reusable pads. So I also had to buy yeah. single use, like disposable pads there last year like november december ish so it has happened yeah at least it happened to both of us right we're not alone we we're got not this. alone neither are you by yeah the way. exactly <laughs> um okay do you want to do one more let's see what's on my list where are we here. at we're at 2240 oh okay another thing other people in your life every once in a while you know my mom or my partner like they want to do something nice for me and it's like Especially, especially my partner, never know what to call him, <laughs> when if he like is doing something vegan, like sometimes he'll go all out and he'll be like, I want to cook us a nice dinner, he did this a few weeks ago, I want to cook us, like, we'll do vegan quesadillas, he went, he got vegan cheese, he did the whole thing, which for him is a big deal. Yeah, So he's not a vegan. No, he's not. Right. So for me it was like, you know, I'm not going to nitpick the fact that he ordered Amazon food that came in plastic and like got plastic vegan cheese bags, you know, because yeah. it was a nice thing that he did, yeah. and uh, the whole vegan thing, just in general, was, like, a good, you know. Yeah. I always get a little, like, wobbly about the whole vegan food and plastic packaging thing. Yeah, like, that's another thing, too, yeah. I feel like there's, like, a point where you, like, don't need that stuff until it becomes a rarity, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like, if you're just coming to veganism, yeah, I, I almost think that's more important yeah. than... I, I am the person that's in the camp of belief that I do think it's more important to make vegan swaps than zero waste swaps. Yeah. yeah. But that's just me. No, I think I agree for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for the most part. Okay, one more really quick one mm -hmm. was that I was coming here, obviously. I don't travel very often, and the toothpaste that I use is David's toothpaste. It's like an aluminum tube. I just got it. I'm yeah. It for the first time. Yeah, but it's too, it's too big, and they only make one size of it. So I couldn't travel here with it, and uh, I wanted to, I had to get, like, something to travel. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to buy a little, like, plastic aluminum laminate tube of toothpaste from, like, usually those brands are not even cruelty-free. Yeah. And so I went to Lush, and I got the toothy tabs, but they switched their toothy tab packaging to plastic. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be cardboard, and they switched to plastic. Really? Mm -hmm. That's what people kept telling me. Why? And like if I had Lush, thought about it together, <laughs> yeah. If I had thought about it sooner, I could have bought them from Bite, mm -hmm. which everyone says is better anyway. And uh, I could have avoided that plastic because that comes in glass, and I think they're refillable. You said, yeah, yeah. They send you like little refillable paper sachets. Yeah, but I didn't, and that so that's definitely a mistake I made just for not being prepared like ahead of time. That's a that's a thing. Same with food. Like, you know, every once in a while you're just, like, not prepared right. with zero waste. Um, it's definitely a lifestyle where you do have to think ahead. Yeah. And you have to plan and uh, be realist with yourself. Yeah. If it was convenient, we wouldn't be in the scenario that we're in. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Um, all right. I think that's it. I think that's all the things. I hope that this made you guys feel like you're not alone because there's definitely been tons of situations. There's been more than what's been in this video. It's been two oh, long sure. years. Yeah. And a lot of things, like I said, like you have weird emotional attachments, which I do want to dive in into the video that we're going to do on her channel. So make sure you go watch that. Um, but yeah, change takes time and you have attachments to things and that's yeah. okay. Like you're not alone. Yeah. And uh, we're here making a change, even if even if you make a mess, like a slip up, you're still making a change. Yeah, I think I love this and I'm trying to say it more, but like I heard that like millions of people doing zero waste imperfectly is much better than just yeah. like us a couple doing people it doing it perfectly. perfectly. For sure. And just remember, just like Shelby saying, the world needs all the good that you can do. Yeah. Yeah. And you're making a difference. It's about the long term game. 
you know, you're making a difference. It's not about just now. You've got, like, 30 years more, 40 years more, 60 years more, depending yeah. on how old you are, like, of changes that you're going to be making and of impact that you're going to be making. So I feel like sometimes there's this whole idea of, like, go all out, but you might get burnt out. Like, think about the long-term game and, like, what's yeah. going to help you best transition and keep your life. Yeah, that's true. Like, people always say, like, this one individual action doesn't really make a difference, mm -hmm. which... I mean, in the bigger picture of things might be true, but yeah, for like your 70 year lifespan, right. it does. Which kind of difference. goes for the sake of saying too, like if you have one mistake, that one mistake in your big 70 year lifespan of the next like 100 times that you're not going to be doing that one thing, right. isn't a huge imprint on the planet, yeah. you know? As long as you keep trying. Even if it feels like it. All what right. Is, what this, is your? Let me wait. You got my uh, outro. Yours is like, <laughs> don't forget to stay happy, humble, and forever compassionate. Mm -hmm. Look at me we'll go. Remember to. Oh, did I say don't forget to? Yeah. Oh, okay. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. I'll link her video below and the podcast and all the stuff. Okay. And until next time, remember to stay happy, humble, and forever compassionate. I love you guys so much. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>